Welcome back to No BSTS, and it's time for another challenge. We've learned a lot over the past couple of weeks, so it's time to test ourselves and see how much we've learned. So in this one, we're going to do an event processor. I've got some code over in a gist that's down in the description, and you can copy and paste that. But first, I kind of want to go over the basic architecture of this. So we're going to process events. So we have a class over here. It's called event processor like that, right? And then over here, we got a map, an event map. And in this case, it's a bunch of like login events, you know, log in, log out. And so the idea is that you take this event processor and you connect it with this, these event, this event map, and it creates, in this case, a, a user event processor, and that is specifically targeted to processing these types of event messages coming in. And an event processor can have a, a map on it, or multiple maps. And what happens is the data goes into, each event goes into that map by name, and then that map then returns out the data that is supposed to you know, be processed, right, or, or the new new event. So it might add in some data to an event. And you can also have a, a filter. Like that, okay, and it's the same sort of idea. So you go, you know, it goes into the filter, and then it comes back out of the filter. I apologize for my, my crappy drawing here. So once you've got that all set up, you've got your, your maps and your filters on your event processor all set up, you basically just take some events and you just kind of push them in to the event processor and then it processes those events using the maps and the filters and then you get out the you know the result is you get some processed events and so it's pretty nice right you know the basic you you just kind of have this reusable element over here this guy this is the the really good you know kind of reusable thing and then you know you just bring in your own event maps, your own maps, your own filters, and you can get to define how that works. So we're gonna have two different variants of this, actually. We're gonna have a basic variant, and then if that's not enough for you, jump ahead and there's an advanced variant that makes use of even more TypeScript features. So literals, the whole things, it's really exciting stuff. So, okay, so we're gonna first scroll down over here to our basic event handler. That's the one we start off with. And I'm gonna copy this out and paste it into VS Code, and we'll just walk through it. So at the top, we have our event processor class, and the event name is going to be one of the events passed in to that event processor. So in this case, it might, we might have this user event map that's got login and log out, and so that event name has to be either login or log out, and that data has to map to whatever this type is right here. So that's how you get events into it. How you add a filter is you assign it to a given event name. So you can have a filter on a login or whatever. And then that filter is going to take the data that comes in and tell you whether or not it's a valid event. Then there's the same thing for map, but in this case, we are going to take in data and return that same data structure. And then at the end, we're going to do get processed events. And so down here is where we use it. We create a user event processor that extends event processor with that event map, and then we instantiate it, and then we give it a filter for a login that says that the user must be must have a value to it, and we also have a, a map for login that if there is a user and a name, then we set has session to true, and then we throw some events at it. We throw a login two login events at it, and we uh, send a log out event to it, and then we get the result back down here. Now, one more thing, we apply the filters before we apply the maps. So the first thing we need to do is check that the event goes and passes all the filters, they all return true, and then we can go and uh, do the map. And then once the, that map is done, then we take the result of all the maps that are associated with that given event name and put that into the processed events. All right, so have at it and pause and then Check back when you're ready to go. All right, while you're out, I made some cinnamon rolls. Mmm, delicious. 
Okay, cool. So let's actually take a crack at implementing on this. So the first thing I want to do is make this a generic. So first I'll extend an empty object like that. So that's going to give us our foundational element here. So this is going to be a key. So each one of these is going to get its own generic. So I'm going to say this is a key that extends the key of that incoming type. All right, and we'll use that here as K. And then we'll say the data in this case has to be TK. All right, so that makes sense. That data has to conform to whatever that key is. So if the key is login, then the data has to conform to the type that is the login event on the event map. All right, let's go and kind of extend that down to add filter and add map. And we'll go and put on there the same sort of thing. So in this case, event name is K and this is TK, event name is K and this is TK, cool. All right, and it also returns a TK, nice, all right. So this is actually starting to look good. We're not actually getting any errors at this point. So at least the generic side of it is done of course. There's no implementation. So let's go and implement a uh, filter first. So, okay. So I'm gonna need an internal array of filters. So what are those gonna be? Those, that's gonna be a record that points from an event name to an array of filters for that type of event. So let's see, the first thing we need to do is, say that is a record that goes from a key of T, so it's gotta be one of those. And then it's going to be pointing at a, an array of those functions. So what does a filter look like? Okay, so what's that gonna look like? Well, let's call that a, a filter function. And given T, it is going to be a function that takes data where it's one of the keys of T like that. And that's very generic, but that's okay at this point actually. And then it returns a Boolean like that. And we'll make it a little easier on ourselves. We'll make that record as well. So type filters T equals filters for that same key of T. And then it's gonna be a filter functions of T and an array of that. Okay, cool. And so this is going to be filters like that. And we'll set it to an empty object like that. Unfortunately, that doesn't, TypeScript doesn't like that. So I'm going to coerce that. And the way that I can coerce that is I can I either do as filters T like that, or I'm gonna do it like this and say that that is filters T. Cool. All right, so let's go over here. Let's go and add it. So this dot uh, filters. And then we need to go make sure that we have a key for that given event name. So event name, and we're gonna say or equals and an array. So that's going to basically say, well, if you don't have any filters already, then go and make an empty array first. And then we're just gonna push that filter into it. Okay, and it's not happy with that, but uh, all I really need to do is just coerce this event name to be a string. And it's, and it's good to go for that. So awesome. Okay, now let's apply that filter. So the first thing I wanna do is say that we want an allow event over here. And we'll say that that's true currently because we wanna make sure, you know, if, if there's no filters or anything, we just let it pass through. So next thing we need to do is we just, I'm gonna use a four here. So four const filter of uh, this dot filters for that event name. So event name or wait, well, I'll, okay, yeah, I'll use that, okay. And so in the, in the case where it doesn't actually exist, I'm just gonna use an empty array, which is gonna be essentially be a no op. Okay, so if the filter applied to the data is not true, then we're gonna say allow event equals false, and then we're gonna break. There we go, just pop out. Cool, all right, good. And then if allow event, then we are going to add it to the list of processed events at some point. But let's go and do the maps first. So I'm gonna do basically exactly the same thing for maps. I'm gonna pull that actually in from my done code. 
And it's basically exactly the same thing. So filter function becomes app function. And the only difference here is that Boolean now becomes data of that type. And there's a similar sort of thing down here. I want to pick that in there like so. And in this case, we're just going to push it at maps. But we need to make maps. So let's see, private maps. Like that, awesome, perfect. And the only last thing down here to fix is to make sure that that map is in there. Cool, okay. So now we want to go and apply a map to this. So the first thing we need to do is essentially just clone off that data. So let's see, mapped data is whatever we had in data. And then we're gonna go and go through all the maps. Cool. And we're just gonna say that mapped data equals map of map data. So each each mapper is gonna kind of, kind of go through each the data, do its own little mapping, and then you know kind of give us back its version of that. Okay, let's see what the problem is here. Okay, looking good. Uh, looks like it just I'm lacking another coercion here. Sometimes you just need to coerce it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So now I just need some place to actually store all this. So let's see. I'm going to create a new private called processed. And to get there, I'm going to create another type called processed event. It'll also take a T. And, and it's going to be an event name. This is going to be one of the key of that T coming in. And then it's going to be some data. Right? What do we get? And that's going to be the one of the that, like that. One of those keys. So that's basically the sum of all of the different data types is in there. So OK, let's take a look. So processed events. So this is going to be an array of that. I'm going to start off with an empty array. Ah, OK, it digs on that. Cool. All right, let's go down here and add it. So once we've got this, then we can say this dot processed, push, and then we give it the event name, which we just got, and the data, which is the mapped data that we just mapped. Okay, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's give this a try and see if it works. Let's see if it outputs this result. Okay, so mpx ts node basic.ts. Nope, fantastic. That looks great. Okay. Oh, well, of course, I don't actually return anything. So return this dot processed. Cool. All right, let's give that a try. Hey, wow. Okay, nice. Ah, very cool. Okay, so feel free to dig in on that and uh, experiment and see where you get to with it. Uh, and then I'm going to truck on and look at the advanced version of this. So let's take a look over at the code and see what the advanced version of this looks like. So the advanced version is basically the same thing, except that we now just have add handler. And add a handler can handle both. So how does a handler do that? So in this case, it's got filter login. So that's going to be applied to login. So you just say the filter is filter, and then whatever the key is on that. And so this can be a map type. Uh, and then you have mapped over here and the same kind of idea. So mapped in that event and map in an event name. Okay, so it's basically just using map types in this scenario and we'll see how we get to with it. So it's pretty exciting stuff. Okay, so let's go back over here and I'm just gonna copy and paste this and create a new one called advanced. Paste that in there. And let's start taking a look at what we can get rid of, what we don't need. We need handlers. We don't need this. And we need, okay, we're not going to worry about that at the moment. Let's go and copy our signature over here. So let's see, add handler. And that's going to replace add filter and add map. Okay, so add handler, that's going to return a void. And that needs to be a handler of type T. So what is a handler? Okay, so I'm going to create a handler here. And it's going to be an object. 
And so for every key of that incoming T, I'm gonna go and grab it. So let's see, prop in key of T. So first we're gonna do a map. And then we're gonna use the template literal syntax. So we're gonna capitalize whatever's in here. And that's gonna be the prop, like that. But this doesn't quite work, so we need to do string and prop. And then this is going to be optional. And it's going to be a function. And that function is gonna take some data, which is the which has the, the type with that specific prop, and then returns a type with that specific prop, like that. Cool, all right. And we also wanna be able to do filter, so let's do the exact same thing. We'll and it together like that, and we'll put on filter in there. In this case, we're going to return a, a Boolean. Cool, okay. So we have handler there, and we're gonna have handlers which is an array of handlers. I'm gonna start off with empty. And when we add it, we're just going to do this dot handlers dot push, and then give it our new handler like that. Okay. And then we pretty much need to rewrite all this. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go through each one of the handlers. Like so. And then we need to get the filter function off that. And that's the filter where you have on and then the event name, which is capitalized. Hmm, okay. So let me bring in a quick capitalize function. That just basically takes a string and cleaves off the first character, makes it uppercase, and then puts on the rest of the string. So that's a nice little capitalizer for you. So let's do capitalize event name, just like that. And then we do the filter func. Okay, looks good, cool. But we need to make sure it exists first. So if the filter func and we do that, then there you go. Okay, so what's the next thing we need to do? So if we're allowed, then we need to do the map function. Okay, so let's go through the handlers again. And this time we want to find the map function. And that's handler, cool, okay. So again, if we have a map function, and then we just run it, okay. Cool, and let's see, map func. All right, so that looks pretty decent, might actually run. So let's see, again, advanced. Okay. Oh, well, I was going to go take the example implementation down here. I left that one around, so we'll add a handler instead, instead of these maps and filters. Cool. That's actually looking really good. So if I go in here, ooh, look at that. So it's actually got the hinting. That's great. Okay, cool. So let's try it out now. I have, I have a good feeling about this. Yeah, all right. Very cool. Yeah, so this is really you know, very advanced stuff. And I encourage you to kind of dig in and play with this yourself, uh, see how it works, tinker it, make it your own. And, uh, and hopefully you've learned a bunch about TypeScript in the previous videos, and this has stretched you even further and, and taught you some more stuff about TypeScript. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit that subscribe button and click on that bell, and you'll be notified the next time a new NoBSTS video arrives.